This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you an interview with R.K. Singh, Minister of Power, New and Renewable Energy. Interviewer is AIR correspondent Anand Chaturvedi. The country has witnessed major reforms in almost every sector in the last six and a half years of the NDA government. One such sector, which is the indicator of growth and industrial development, is the power sector. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, in his address at the Climate Ambition Summit on 12th of this month, said that the centennial India in 2047 will not only meet its own target, but will also exceed expectations. He said that by 2030, India has a target of producing 450 gigawatts of renewable energy. He also inaugurated the world's largest hybrid renewable energy park on 15th of this month in Gujarat's Kutch region, which will be producing 30,000 megawatts of power in near future. Listeners, today we are joined by Union Power Minister Sri R.K. Singh, who is also the Minister of New and Renewable Energy, and he'll share information about some major achievements of the country in the power and renewable energy sector, and will also discuss about the future goals and roadmaps. Sir, the nation emerged from the perils of the pandemic in a remarkable way, and the economy too is almost on the track as it was before the COVID era. What has been the challenge for the power ministry in these times and how is the demand in the power sector? The COVID was a challenge for the entire economy, including the power sector. Uh, one of the challenges, of course, was making sure that the electricity did not go off at any point of time. And we ensured that. That demand came down because of the lockdown. Industrial and the commercial sectors had lockdown because of that the demand came down. But now we have recovered. And uh, in October, the growth of demand by 12%, demand and supply of electricity. And in December, on every day, I see the demand and supply of electricity about 10 to 12,000 megawatts more than the corresponding day of the previous year. So we are growing at a rapid pace after even during this COVID period, after the lockdown. I really want to congratulate all my workers, especially the, the power generation and transmission systems who continued working despite the problems of COVID and despite the hazards of COVID. As a result, we had about 4,500 people who got infected by COVID in the generation sector alone. And, you know, I had a few hundred people infected in the transmission sector. But COVID posed other challenges as well. The collections from the consumers had come down tremendously. After the lockdown ended, in fact, even during COVID, we realized that, you know, some sort of infusion of liquidity will be required. And we made arrangements for the infusion of liquidity. We have sanctioned loans for about 1,10,000 crores from PFC and REC to the different distribution companies, out of which we have disbursed about 47,000 crores already. This has to be disbursed in two tranches. The disbursement in the first tranche is almost complete. So this is as far as the challenge of COVID is concerned. Incidentally, we continued adding to our capacity, renewable energy capacity, even during COVID. Even during COVID, we finalized three bits, you know, the totaling almost about 3,000 megawatts, 3,600 megawatts, very successfully. So we were one of the very few countries who continued adding capacity even during COVID. The Integrated Power Development Scheme, sir, was approved soon after the NDA government came into power in 2014. What have been the development parameters under this scheme and what is its current status? Our government sanctioned two schemes for strengthening the distribution system. One was the Deen Dyal Gram Yoti Yojana. Now, the Deen Dyal Gram Yoti Yojana was aimed at strengthening the distribution system in rural land. And the Integrated Power Development Scheme was aimed at developing the power system or the distribution system in the urban areas. So, both schemes are complementary. And together, again, we have strengthened the entire distribution system. We sanctioned schemes worth 2 lakh 2,000 crores for extending the distribution systems in the rural and urban areas throughout the country. Uh, we have completed almost, you know, we have done almost 80% of the work. We have constructed almost you know, 2,900 new substations. We have strengthened almost about 3,000 odd, 3,100 older substations. We have modernized and upgraded. We have added HT lines of almost about 5 lakh circuit kilometers. That is the LT lines we've added, 5 lakh circuit kilometers. And the HT lines we added 2 lakh 52,000 circuit kilometers. So that's huge. So we have revamped the whole power distribution system in the country. And the result is there for everybody to see. The result of all these measures is 
that a survey was carried out by the Council for you know Electricity, Water, etc., etc., and independent NGO, and that survey showed that the availability of power increased from 12 and a half hours in 2015 in the rural areas. I am talking about the rural areas to about 20 and a half hours, 21 hours in 2020. And this survey was focused on all the larger states, which were once called Bihar, you know, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, etc., the challenge states. And that is the story of the increase in availability of power by an independent survey. They found that in the towns, 79 to 80 percent of the towns had 23 hours of power. And the remaining about, you know, 20, 21 percent of the towns had 22 hours of power. So virtually we have ensured 24 by 7 supply. And if there is any blip anywhere, the blip is not because of lack of power. Because as I said, our generation capacity today is twice our peak demand. Our peak demand is 1,85,000 megawatts. Our generation capacity is 3,74,000 megawatts. So we have sufficient generation capacity to meet whatever requirements the distribution companies and the states have, and we can supply them whatever power they need. So you just named uh, the Deen Dayal Upadhyay Gram Jyoti Yojana as well. And it was brought out with the name of judicious roastering of supply of two agricultural and non-agricultural consumers in the rural areas of the country. What has been the success story of that so far in terms of rural household electrification? As I said, not only rural household electrification, but total household electrification we've completed under the Swabhadiya scheme. So the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Urja Surakshayam Uthan Mahabhyan, the PM Kusum Yojana, was introduced last year in 2019 with an aim to reduce farmers' burden. Can you share with our listeners how has this scheme helped the farmers in the country at large? You know, this is a scheme which is tailor-made for the farmers. One objective is to increase the income of the farmers. So what we have provided is that any farmer can set up solar panels on his land and he will buy the electricity. Now, if he sets up the solar panel himself, his income will be a minimum of 65,000 rupees per acre per year. If he gets it set up by a developer and just leases his land out to the developer, the lease rent which he gets will be 25,000 rupees per year per acre, which is more than what he would earn by, you know, the growing paddy or wheat. But in order to make sure that our production, food production is not hampered, our guideline says that this should be done on barren land, arid land, barren land. So increasing par farmer's income. Second is, de-dieselization of agriculture and reducing the cost to the farmer for irrigation. So we have provided another Kusum Yojana for replacing all diesel pumps with solar pumps. So the cost of irrigation for the farmer will come down to one-fourth, in fact one-fifth what it is now. The third is, even where the farmer, farmer's agriculture pump is grid connected, we provided for solarization. Now what that will do is, number one, it will reduce the cost to the farmer for irrigation to almost zero. And that it will also save the outgo from the state exchequer on account of agriculture electricity subsidy. So it benefits the farmer, he gets you know, electricity during daytime for irrigation at almost no cost or very low cost. It saves the state government thousands of crores in outgo on account of agriculture electricity subsidy. For example, in Karnataka, the outgo on agriculture electricity subsidy is 14,000 crores a year. That will be saved. So it's beneficial for the farmer, it's beneficial for the distribution company and the state government. So this scheme is a win-win scheme for everybody in the farm sector. Sir, under your able leadership, the power ministry recently promulgated rules laying down the rights of power consumers in the country. This Absolutely. is seen as a path-breaking and historic reform in the field of power sector. What is its precise objective? And please also highlight the necessity to promulgate these rights. Absolutely. You see, the power system, the power supply system is a monopoly. So it be a government monopoly or a private monopoly. In a particular area, there is only one distribution company. So if that distribution company makes you run around to get connections, to have your load increased or decreased, you know, to resolve disputes about defective meters, etc., you have to run around. You don't have any remedy. You don't have an alternative if that distribution company makes you run around if its service is very poor. And the consumer had no rights whatsoever. And they didn't have any remedy. So we have laid down rights by rules. 
We have laid down timelines for every aspect of service. Wherever there is a consumer interface, there is a time. So, for example, if you apply for connection, these rights we have laid down. If you have an urban area and you apply for connection, that connection has to be given in a maximum of seven days. If you are in a small town, suburban area, and you apply for connection, that connection has to be given in a maximum of 15 days. If you live in a village and you apply for connection, that connection has to be given in a maximum of 30 days. Now, these are outer limits. And within these outer limits, the State Electricity Regulatory Commission can set stiffer targets. But these outer limits will remain. Similarly, you have a defective meter. You lodge a complaint and incidentally, there has distribution company has to set up a call center where you can lodge complaints by telephone. It has to set up a website where you can lodge complaints online. It has to be acknowledged, the complaint. And if you complain about defective meter, that complaint has to be acknowledged immediately online. And that meter has to be inspected within the timeline. It has been laid down. If it is defective, it is to be replaced within a timeline. Dispute about bill, same thing. Refund, same thing. So, disconnection, same thing. For everything, we have laid down timeline. So, now, you don't have to run from pillar to post. So, they don't adhere to the timeline, they will be penalized. And that amount will be credited to your account. So, we have made the consumer king. We believe that the power system exists to serve the people, not the other way around. And just because you are a monopoly does not mean that you can make the consumer run around. Sir, so you are credited to bring 100% rural electrification in the country. And despite increasing prices of coal, power cost in the country is one of the lowest in the world. Yes. What measures did the government take to ensure the low prices for the consumers? We did two or three things. One was we flexibilized coal, availability of coal. So we said that you have more efficient plants, you can divert your coal from less efficient plants to more efficient plants. So that is resulting in a saving of almost 1400 to 1500 crores a year. That itself. Then we also said that we will have a merit order dispatch. That means plants which are more efficient will be dispatched first. So as a result of that, again, the additional saving comes to almost about, you know, 1500-1600 crores per year. The net result is that even though the price of coal went up by about 45%, price of coal and uh, the freight, the price of electricity has gone up only by 20%. And I am talking about the past about 4-5 years. So over the past 5 years, the price of electricity has gone up only by about 20%, whereas the price of coal and the freight the Prime Minister Narendra Modi, he said that shared an idea and target of making India a $5 trillion economy by 2024. The progressive reforms in the power sector and centre's commitment towards harnessing renewable energy resources is also evident. Can you share with our listeners the vision that you have to meet the energy demands of the country and to reach out to the areas like Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh, you just said, including others which need special attention? Now, insofar as our capacity addition is concerned, it's going on a pace, as I told you. Now, we are focusing mainly on renewables because we want to reduce the carbon footprint of our country. Because we believe that environment is important. That's what our government believes. That's what our Prime Minister believes. So, therefore, our capacity addition is mostly in renewables. And we are reducing the capacity addition in fossil fuel-based generation. And as I said, we are already, our service capacity is twice that of our demand. Because we believe, and actually it's a fact, that electricity is the engine of growth. If you do not have electricity in sufficient quantities, uh, you will not be able to industrialize. We are the engine of growth. And therefore, our uh, capacity will always be sufficient. Not only sufficient to meet our requirements, but sufficient to meet the requirements of accelerated growth. That is our policy. Thank you, sir. Thank you for those Thank deep you. insights. Thank you for speaking to AIR. You were listening to an interview with R.K. Singh, Minister of Power, New and Renewable Energy. The interviewer was AIR correspondent Anand Chaturvedi. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our website, newsonair.com. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsttalks at gmail.com.